Yeah, horror mateys. Welcome to Sea of Thieves. This is Damron. In this video, we are covering the Merchant Alliance Trading Company in Sea of Thieves in its entirety. We're going to cover all of the combinations. I'm going to the combinations, the combinations of commendations. We're going to cover all of them. Okay, I'm going to cover everything in its entirety. We're going to discuss all the commendations, the fastest way to do all of these. A lot has changed since I originally made this guide, and there's a lot of new voyages. There's new items. There's all kinds of new things. So we're going to cover everything so that you guys can get your commendations and get your achievements. So let's get started. We got a lot to cover. So briefly, let's go over the commendations in the Merchant Alliance, which can be found in the Pirate Log Merchant Alliance section. Um, the one of the longest ones is just completing 200 Merchant Alliance voyages. You're going to need to turn in 150,000 gold, sail a thousand miles, purchase 250 voyages, and we'll talk about the fastest way to do all of those. Our crate quests, uh, you have to turn in 50 fruit crates, 50 cannonball, and 50 wood crates, as well as 100 gunpowder kegs on schedule. And then also we need to do 200 chickens, 200 pigs, 200 snakes, and 200 golden animals if you want to get all of those commendations. And for the cargo runs, we have the plants, the rum bottles, and the clothing that you need to do 200 of each, as well as the Devil's Roar cargo, which has those same items, except they're the Devil's Roar version, and you know they're worth twice as much gold. But again, you need to do 200 of those, and again, we'll cover that a little bit later. There's also a lot of new commendations dealing with the emissaries, which I have a complete separate guide about emissaries and all things about that. So I'll link that in the end and you can check that out. But essentially there's commendations for ranking up your emissary flag. And then also while you have an emissary flag on, you're getting points towards those commendations to turn in items while flying an emissary flag. But now you really shouldn't be doing anything merchant related without an emissary flag on. You should always have that on. There's also accommodations to represent the crew with your costume and in your ship cosmetics, which came out in a later update, which I'll show you, as well as the newest update, which added the manifest voyages, which brought us some captain's cabins, as well as manifest items that we need to turn in for the last new commendations at the end of your journal. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're talking about the different types of voyages, we're going to go through all of them, what's good about them, what's bad about them, which ones you should do, and what they're going to be good for. So we have the new manifest, which we'll cover last. We have the, the you know, the animal crate quest, which really was the only way to complete voyages back in the day. And that's going to be collecting pigs, chickens, and snakes. And then we have the cargo runs. And as I mentioned, before you start any merchant alliance thing, Put up your merchant emissary. That is going to be the table right in front of the merchant alliance vendor on the dock at every outpost. So before we go on our journey, we're going to go ahead and put that flag up. And you know that you've got it up. If it's on the back of your boat, you should see this flag and it'll have the merchant alliance symbol. And mine only has one dot under it. As you level up, that will level up as well. So let's go ahead and dive into the first of our mission types, which is going to be the animal voyages. And I'm going to show you the most efficient way to do these, but also, you know, what are these good for and why they're not so good? And honestly, they're not so good anymore, but we'll touch on that here in a minute. So if you start these, what you're going to notice is you're going to get a list of different animals that you need to collect. And it's going to be uh, either snakes, pigs, or chickens. And there's four types of each of those, right? You have the black and, you know, spotted pig. You have a normal pig. You have a golden pig and just a pure black pig. And then you've got four different types of snakes and four different types of chicken. And once you start that voyage, you can pick up those crates from any vendor. It doesn't actually have to be from the vendor that you started the voyage on. Now, once you pick up these crates that you have, you're going to have to travel to different islands around the Sea of Thieves to collect the specific animal types that you need. And one of the things I'm going to recommend is that you put those crates on a rowboat and use that rowboat to travel around the island. It's much faster than carrying these crates around an island. And one of the you know animals that we're going to pick up is snakes. And snakes can basically poison you if you get too close. But the way to mitigate that is if you play music. They'll kind of subdue and you can put them in their crate and not worry about being bit. So as you can see here, I'm using this rowboat to kind of row around the island. 
And when I see the animal that I need, boom, I pick it up and I can take it back to my rowboat. The thing about just trying to find these animals and it will just cause you a headache is if you pick up these crates and are just wandering around the island with the crate in your hand, it can be kind of frustrating because the game slows you down as if this is a treasure chest. This tiny wicket basket here is so heavy uh, that you can't walk at a normal pace. So I recommend using a rowboat and rowing around and helping you do this a little bit more efficiently. And one of the things about the snakes that I will point out is even if you have the snakes in the rowboat in the front, even if they're not subdued, they won't bite you while you're rowing. So that's a good thing. So you don't have to worry about being bit. Now the pigs are really the only other animal that has something special and that's that you need to feed them throughout your journey, anything, a banana. And they'll actually sit down in their crate if they're about to die, but the pigs can die and they'll disappear. So anytime you go to an island to get your next set of animals, or if you're gonna be away from your boat for a minute, make sure you go ahead and give them a banana, you know, a banana and you know, feed them and go get your other animals. The other you know, animal type is chickens, which you see here. And chickens are the best one because they don't die from not being fed and they don't spit venom at you. They just sit in their cage and wait to be turned into chicken nuggets. So the animal voyages, you know, the good thing about them is that they count for voyages completed towards your 250 voyages. A bad thing, they're not really worth that much gold. They're not really worth that much, you know, emissary value. And also you're not really sailing towards your thousand miles during this voyage because you're stuck on islands looking for animals. And it takes a lot of time to find all these animals. So these particular missions, honestly, other than working on our commendations for the 200 different types of animals and the 200 golden animals, honestly, guys, I would avoid this quest. It's not really anything that's going to help you out. Only other thing that the animal quest can help you get is the black powder achievement and black powder commendation, which is to turn in 100 barrels of gunpowder. Um, you have to do those on a quest. It's not just turning in any gunpowder barrel. It has to be on quest because if you look at the commendation, it says turn in 100 gunpowder barrels on time. So it's either going to be from the random voyages that you find in barrels, but the best way to grind this is just to lay down the animal voyages and wait till you have one that has a barrel of gunpowder in it, and you can actually just go turn in that gunpowder and then cancel the quest. You'll get credit towards the one the 100 for doing that and then you don't have to worry about the animals so if you want to grind that out that's the best way to do so so moving on to our next quest type which is our cargo runs and the cargo runs are actually pretty good for a couple things um, but the actual cargo run itself you know isn't that great you're you know here i am i'm placing one down and once you get to the master level, you can pick up eight at a time. But when you guys are first starting out, you're only gonna be able to pick up a couple pieces, two, three pieces. So it's not very efficient in that regard, but as you become higher level, when you place it down, you're gonna be able to get eight. And often, well, basically always, the first one you place down, you're gonna be able to pick up that cargo at the outpost you're at. So before you leave the outpost, Go ahead and put another one down and generally the pickup location will be nearby so you can actually pick up the ones from the outpost you're at and then pick up eight more from somewhere nearby okay so let's talk about the specific items just briefly and the plants are really the ones that are going to give you the most trouble although they are much hardier than they used to be so you have to water these plants every so often and you know about every minute and a half or so because they will wilt and if they become withered then they're no longer in perfect condition and the commendation is says you need to turn them in in perfect condition so you can see when i water it it kind of livens up a little bit you used to be able to stack them all on on top of each other and one you know bucket would heal them all but that doesn't work anymore um, the other thing you can do is put them in the bottom of your boat and kind of flood your boat but you're running a risk with having that much water in your boat the rum bottles are again they're much sturdier than they used to be they you know you can take a little bit of damage but essentially they get damaged if you they get shot if you're jumping things like that and then the clothes they can't get wet so you're gonna have to turn in the clothes without getting wet now if you fall in the water just for a moment 
it's okay they'll still be in perfect condition so don't worry you can touch water and it still be okay but the best way to do the cargo runs is actually the emissary quest so if you get your emissary to rank five as you saw right there on my emissary you can go to any merchant alliance vendor and claim your emissary quest and this is by far the best way to do these cargo runs because when you pick it up you're going to get two emissary cargo run quests that are going to be for 10 crates each and the first 10 crates are always going to be at the outpost where you've picked up the emissary quest and the second 10 will generally be at a different location but generally that is relatively close and after you pick up that emissary quest you want to lower your emissary flag and then you want to raise it again so now we're going to start off at level one again and what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to essentially get to grade five again and do another cargo run and i'm going to show you how easy that is so this is at the second turn in i turned in my 10 um, cargo run and this is the second 10 that i'm turning in so i'm going to go ahead and turn all these in real quick and what you see is i'm already at four and a quarter of emissary value just from those 20 you know cargo items so basically all i need to do is do one more small thing like sink a skeleton ship sink a megalodon grab the treasure from said uh skeleton ship or megalodon and boom you're grade five again and you can repeat that cargo emissary run it's a great way to work on that commendation but it's not that great of a method to gain emissary value or just gold because the items aren't that valuable the only other thing to touch on about cargo runs are the devil's roar cargo runs these can only be picked up from Moro's Peak Outpost, and these are basically the same items, but they're red, and they're worth twice as much gold, and you can only pick them up here, and you generally will deliver them in uh, you know, the Devil's Roar. Sometimes you'll actually de deliver them to Kraken's Fall, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, the other way that you can do the Devil's Roar cargo runs is via um, athena quests there now i did try to pick up an emissary quest at the moros peak outpost and unfortunately that sends you back to the regular sea of thieves so the only way that you can work on these three commendations right here is specifically picking them up at moros peak and doing them and or doing athena's voyages in the area in which you'll do about eight if you decide to turn them in but a lot of people just pick them up and don't deliver them anyway Moving on to the last type of voyage, and by far the best voyage for a lot of our achievements and a lot of our commendations, are the new Manifest Voyages. And the Manifest Voyages are essentially a boat that was supposed to deliver a Manifest, but didn't make it. So they sent you out to find it, and it's going to give you an origin location and a destination. So this one starts at Daggertooth, and it ends at Marauder's Arch. Now there's 13 different routes or trading routes that exist in the game for these possible routes that you can go on. And that route is very much dependent on where you, where you are in the game when you start the quest. So there is an achievement to do all 13 different routes. And basically what you want to do is you want to go, I'm going to create a guide about it and show all 13 routes, but really you just want to go to the route that you're missing. Uh, the starting or ending point of it and place the voyage down at that point but when you do it essentially if you go to the starting point and look off in the distance you're looking for a bunch of birds in the sky and it's always going to lead you to a pile of a bunch of loot and always that barrel right there that's going to create your first clue and it's either going to give you a location or it's going to give you an island like you just saw here with a circled part so this one's taking me to sunken grove and you can see that blue little glimmer on the shore there. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a blue glimmer. The treasure for this specific quest that is unique to it are these clue, you know, bottles, the captain's key. Um, they always have a blue kind of glow to them. So that's what you're looking for. The other thing it can say is, oh, we went to 05. And that's basically telling you to go 05 on the map. And it's going to be another location with stuff that's floating in the water. And you're going to find these by finding the birds that are above these. And these are small groups of birds. They're not big ones like you have at a shipwreck. They're small ones like you're gonna see above floating barrels, so as you can see here. And they can be difficult to find, especially at night or if you're in the wilds. 
So when you find them, definitely keep your spyglass on them, kind of keep them in your view, make sure you're staying on track. Cause as you can see when I'm not looking at it with the spyglass here, they're, they're basically very hard to see, right? Until I look, you know, I'm like, okay, there they are. I'm going in the right direction. But essentially what you're trying to look for on all, as you kind of progress these clues is the captain's key. And the captain's key is gonna be able to get us the loot at the end of this mission. But what I'm going to show you is why this mission is amazing, okay? You see that this was my last clue and the last clue say, oh, you know, something's gonna happen to the ship and they need to go to the final location. That's how you, got, you know you got the last clue. But you don't need to get the last clue. If you just go to the destination, Marauder's Arch. Now, in this place, I, I, you know, I happen to have all the clues, but I want to show you why the Manifest Voyages is by far the best way to complete your 250 voyages faster than the other option, which is just the Animal Crate missions. The Cargo Crate runs do not count as voyages, unfortunately. So this is by far the fastest way because what you can do, even if you don't want to get the captain's key, you don't even have to get the captain's key. You could just go to the end location and then when you're here, just look for the closest birds. Again, the kind of barrel sized birds, not shipwreck sized birds. Look for the closest birds to that ending location. Now, sometimes there might be two if there's two locations associated with the quest, but once you find those birds, uh, say you didn't do anything else say you just went to the end destination and you found these birds right so if we look at our map it says okay the destination is marauder stars i started at marauder's edge i found those birds i went down to them say that's what you did and then you just jump in the water and all you you know you're here this is the end destination of the voyage you don't have to do anything else as soon as you find the manifest and pick up the manifest which is this book and it's not always going to be on the captain's wheel it can be in different locations the voyage is over so one not only is it the fastest way to complete merchant alliance voyages but you're also sailing you're not sitting at an island like the animal voyages so you're getting credit towards your thousand mile sail so by far the best voyage if you're going to do merchant voyages um you know if you want to get that 250 voyages and the achievement as well nonetheless you definitely want to get those captain's keys and open these because there's a lot of loot in these cabins in the captain's quarters um, i like to just kind of pull them out and then you can let go of them and let them float up to the top of the water but this is a lot of loot you can get a lot of gold from this you will easily get your 150,000 gold achievement and commendation just from a couple of these manifest voyages but what I would recommend, instead of just going to the end, you know, destination and, and finishing the voyages straight out, I, like I said, I would recommend getting the key at least, you know, and the key can be in the first location you go, the second, it could be at any. But if you at least get the key, you're going to get all the loot. And that is by far the best way to do your voyages. Do your 250 voyages this way. And also the items that you're going to get, you, they're worth more gold. You get way more value. You're also sailing, as I mentioned, so you're going to get credit towards your thousand mile sail. Now, you're probably not going to get a thousand, but again, anytime you're doing anything else, if you're doing PvP, if you're doing anything else in the game, slap down a voyage so you're getting miles sailed. And then obviously purchasing those 250 voyages as well. But you definitely want to get the key too, because not only, you know, recovering the manifest is going to get you these commendations down here, which you only need to get 20 of, by the way. Um, but you, if you only are getting the manifest, then you're going to miss out on getting the captain's keys, which is for the cabin fever commendation. And to complete that, you only need 20 and you can see the titles that come or 50, excuse me, but you can see the title that comes once you reach the final grade of those two new commendations. But as you can see here, I mean, you get tons of loot, tons of emissary value. I mean, no question. This is the best voyage to do. Um, in the Merchant Alliance, not only for the voyages, but you're going to just get more value out of it. So once you get your 200 animals, move on. Don't do any more of those. You know, you lucked out. Like me back in the day, the only option was to do animal crate voyages. So, uh, you know, patience goes a long way, I guess. But as you can see, from me turning in that, you're going to get a bunch more gold, bunch more emissary value. So the only other thing you know you, there's only a couple more things that we want to talk about with merchant alliance and 
two of the commendations are associated, or three of them are associated with you having a Merchant Alliance costume as well as the ship's appearance and cosmetics. In rocking those, as well as with a crew, are those last three achievements. And this is all of the Merchant Alliance cosmetics right here. And the costume is actually purchased at any Merchant Alliance vendor. When you talk to them, you'll be able to purchase the costume once you have the ability to purchase the emissary flag. And as you rank up, as you promote, so I'm an eminent merchant, unfortunately, so they're, they're grayed out to the right there. But as you level up, you're also going to have the option to purchase ship cosmetics, cannons, wheels, all that is going to be right there for you to the right of the costume as you promote through the Merchant Alliance until you get to 75, right? And again, I do have a separate guide that shows the fastest way to get to level 75. Um, it's really, you know, kind of in tier events like Flameheart, but doing Port of the Dam stacks and getting those stronghold barrels is by far the fastest way to rank up the Merchant Alliance to level 75. So the last thing to touch on is the Emissary Ledger, and I just want to briefly go over this because I have an entire separate guide that talks about Emissary value and everything you need to know Emissary. But essentially, as long as you have your Emissary flag up, everything that you turn in is going to give you Emissary value. And there is an achievement to get top Emissary rank, which is the top 25%, five different times. And this is going to reset every month. Unfortunately, you're only going to be able to get the reward one time. So the achievement is a little redundant because they make, you know, they want you to do it five times, but you don't get anything in game reward, not even a commendation. So that's going to wrap it up for the Merchant Alliance. Um, we went over a bunch of stuff. I hope I covered everything. Again, it'll all be time stamped. I'll have some extra videos here for anything that you guys might need. We're going down with the boat. Um, I kind of filmed all this in like one roll. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. My plan is to do something very similar for Order of Souls, Gold Hoarders, Reapers um, as well. So, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the seas.